I had started the shop uh, back in the early 80s in a different location, similar kind of building. I've always been interested in antiquity. As a kid, what really caught my eye was spending Sundays at the Metropolitan Museum of Art Musical Instrument Collection, and I was just fascinated by these weird branches of musical instruments that were used uh, for a short period of time and never developed or continued. So, you know, having been enamored of that as a child, you know, drew me to uh, repair and restoration. I don't know, there's just something about old things that I've always been drawn to since I was really small. The feel of it, the smell of it, like old cases have a certain odor, old finishes have a certain odor. And I just think vintage guitars are, are the best. People that come here that have never been here before, I guess the best thing to know is that we get stuff that you'll probably never get to see anywhere else in the world, and we'll actually let you handle it. It's not like a shop where you come in and like, we don't let you touch anything. It's like the shop where you can come play with anything you want to play with, even if you aren't going to buy it. This is a Dyer Symphony harp guitar. These were built by the Larson brothers and it's probably the nicest harp guitar ever made. It's sort of just everything you would ever want in a harp guitar. It's like functional, it's built like to the highest standards of the time, and it sounds better than any other harp guitar I've ever played. There are some instruments that I've, I've spent decades hunting down. So this was one of the first examples of, you can't even call it really a solid body, it's a plank body guitar uh, with the electronics package built here, uh, volume control. And uh, so this was a particularly uh, important instrument to me. I'm interested in early electronics and how the world of music evolved. You'd think there wouldn't be that much left to discover at this point, but there's always stuff coming out of the, the woodwork. Like the Bigsby that we have here, that was previously unknown. This is the very last Spanish neck Bigsby guitar that was ever made. And uh, what I love about these is that he stamped the exact date that he finished the guitar on, on the back, the bottom end. I really do consider it an honor to be able to, you know, restore and handle some of these pieces. What is this one going for? Uh, this is quite a bit of money. This is uh, uh, somewhere around six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. I go on little guitar safaris and scour the internet. I love gear, vintage guitars. Probably the coolest thing that I've ever found was that Firebird 3. This is Inverness Green, so this is one of Gibson's custom colors. It's the cleanest one I've ever seen. It's super rare and I'm obsessed with it. I feel very privileged to work here, um, not just because it's cool, um, but also because it's so rare to be able to have not just a great selection of vintage guitars, but to really have certain models of every era, you know, to be able to try a early 30s, late 30s, early 40s Martin 017 and hear how that kind of sound has progressed over time. Another cool thing about retro fret is that we just get all sorts of, you know, kind of unusual instruments that you're not going to find at a guitar store that doesn't specialize in vintage, like a mandocello. Something that's cool about Diderio, and one of the reasons we use them in the shop is because they make strings for mandocello and they make strings for mandolin and they make strings for my pedal steel at home, and they just pretty much make strings for all the weird stuff that we need strings for. I had started the shop back in the early 80s, and the question was like, how do we get strings for all the guitars we're fixing? And Diderio was really the first company that opened up uh, the door to me in terms of getting material, and I've never forgotten that. So, uh, you know, I'm a little sentimental about that.